Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to discuss about eVPN. In the simplest of terms, Ethernet VPN or eVPN is a technology that connects layer two network segments separated by a layer three network. An Ethernet VPN enables you to connect dispersed customer sites using a layer two virtual bridge. eVPN accomplishes this by building the layer two network as a virtual layer 2 overlay over the layer 3 network. It uses BGP as its control protocol. Let's discuss about different devices role in eVPN. An Ethernet VPN or eVPN comprises of CE, PE and P devices. CE, the customer edge device, is normally a router or layer 2 switch that provides access to the PE device. PE or provider edge router connects to the customer sites and maintains eVPN specific information. PE or provider edge device form the edge of the MPLS infrastructure. The PE devices provides layer 2 virtual bridge connectivity between the CE devices. P device or a provider router do not carry an eVPN state. They simply provide label switching router services to facilitate the transfer of label frames between PE routers. Next, let's discuss about different e Ethernet VPN terminologies. Starting with EVI, also known as Ethernet VPN instance. An Ethernet VPN instance is an eVPN routing and forwarding instance spanning all the PE routers participating in that VPN. Or you can say it is defined as all the PE device participating in the specific eVPN. An EVI is configured on the PE router on a per customer basis. Each EVI has a unique route distinguisher and one or more route targets. The next type of terminology we will discuss is Ethernet segment, also known as ES. When a customer site is connected to one or more PEs via a set of Ethernet links. Then that set of Ethernet link is called an Ethernet segment. An Ethernet segment appears as a link aggregation group or lag to the CE device. The links from router PE1 and PE3 to device CE1 form an Ethernet segment. The next terminology we have is Ethernet segment identifier. A unique non-zero identifier that identifies an Ethernet segment and is called an Ethernet segment identifier. Multi-home CEs such as Active Active or Active Standby require unique ESI for the links. Both PEs need to use the same unique ESI when connected to the same CE device. The Ethernet segment of the multi-home device CE1 has an ESI value of starting with 0 till 9 as shown. Single home CE devices do not require an ESI as they by default attain the reserved value of zeros as shown. Next, let's discuss about eVPN operation. eVPN uses MPBGP mechanism and is the main signaling protocol used by eVPN. eVPN provides a way to learn and distribute MAC addresses across customer sites by using MPBGP. Hence, MAC address learning happens at the control plane. eVPN defines a new sub-address family eVPN address family in the layer 2 VPN address family. In the eVPN address family, a new type of NLRI is added, that is eVPN NLRI. It defines several types of BGP eVPN routes which can carry information such as the host IP address, MAC address, etc. eVPN advertises up to five root types using MPBGP. Type 1 root Ethern, also known as Ethernet AD root or auto discovery route. Type 2 root, also known as host advertisement route. Type 3 root, also known as inclusive multicast route. Type 4 root, also known as Ethernet segment route. And the last one, also known as type 5 route, which is called IP prefix route advertisement. Let's discuss about these route types in detail. Type 1 route, also known as Ethernet Auto Discovery Route, only advertised by PE that is part of multi home CE. It announces the reachability of multi home Ethernet segment. 
There are two different type of Ethernet auto discovery routes and each has their own format and functionality. The first one is AD root per ESI. The root type is used for fast convergence that is mass withdraw functions after link failure as well as split horizon filtering used for active active multi homing. And the second type we have is AD root per EVI used to enable active active load balancing to PEs connected to multi home CE also known as aliasing. Then we have type 2 route also known as host advertisement route which is used to advertise the reachability of a MAC address or optionally a MAC and IP binding. Then we have type 3 route also known as inclusive multicast route used to enable ingress replication for forwarding bump traffic between PEs. These type of routes are required for broadcast, unknown unicast and multicast traffic delivery across eVPN network. Then we have type 4 route also known as Ethernet segment route. This type of route is only advertised and accepted by PEs connected to multi home CEs. The route is used to discover PEs which are attached to the same shared Ethernet segment. This route type is used in designated forwarder election process. Designated forwarder is responsible for sending bump traffic to the particular to the CE on a particular Ethernet segment which prevents traffic duplication and prevent bum loop towards the CE device. And the last type we have is IP prefix route advertisement. The type 5 route is used to advertise layer 3 network route. That's it for this session. I hope this was informative for you. Thank you for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you.